Discover the enchanting aroma of good smell bottle. For me, it's the same, so I, I do everything I can. Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to expand a little more on the functionalities for the Lynx Plus vase in Comfy UI. It's able to do various tasks, like you can use the WAN video vase to do control net V2V. In this scenario, I'm using it for face swapping. Basically, we have two vases. We've experimented and demoed lots of video tutorials before using multiple vases for different conditions. You can even use your input frames as the style reference image. The input frames can be any kind of control net input here. And for the second vase, this time I'm using an input mask. What we want to do is face swapping while also focusing on the reference image here. As you can see, the input frames have a white region covering the source video, specifically masking the area we want to work on. So, in this demo video, this is stock footage, a close-up shot of someone doing a selfie flicking their phone, right here. You can see that their fingers sometimes cover the face in certain frames. Most of the time, when you use older methods like React or Face Swap, or other face swap techniques for video, you'll notice flickering whenever something overlaps the face. But here, because we're using the Lynx model connected with vase, we can identify the face ID, like we talked about in the last videos. We use Lynx to prepare the face data for the face ID, then mask the area we want to swap in the video, and finally apply the new face on top of that. We've got the reference image here, and the face ID gets passed into the sampler too just like in the previous video where we used the Lynx face embed and fed it into the sampler. If you missed that part, how Lynx works in AI video generation, go check out those earlier videos. This time, we're combining more different variants of AI models, all based on the WAN 2.1 foundation model, to build a workflow on top of it. Here you can see we've set this image as input, and we also have our character's face. The best results come from a portrait close-up or medium shot of the character. So, let's say we run this workflow. You'll see the face just pop up here as the face ID. Then we can move on to processing the video. I've also added an image preview here, just so it's easier for humans to understand which regions are actually being masked. I'm using segment anything here, and I've masked the face and hair regions from the reference video. That means we're going to use this character's face as the reference. Okay. Here's the generated result. I set it to 10 steps and allocated about 81 frames for this demo. Let's check out the video. As you can see, there's a finger overlapping the face area we masked, but it's still producing really smooth transitions. This is a face swap and it's doing way better than older methods. Frame by frame or image by image face swaps usually cause flickering and the faces don't stitch together nicely across video frames. Tools like Reactor Face Swap can work well for static images, but when you're dealing with coherent styles and video consistency, it's much harder to replicate a face that actually blends in naturally. Older methods often just crop and paste, which doesn't match the style or lighting. Or if you used WAN 2.1 vase only for face region masking, and most of the time, it won't generate consistent character face. Combining with links with WAN 2.1 vase, we can achieve such result. With the current models integrated into the sampling process, the video quality and performance are way better. You can see the face ID here, the same character's identity is applied consistently, while the rest of the environment stays exactly like the original reference video, that first-person point of view stock footage of someone flicking their phone. Now, something worth mentioning about the sampling. If you want to generate longer videos, one option is to use the context option here and connect this node to the sampler. But if you run it for a long video, the style consistency might drift. For example, I tried generating an 8 second video. That's 81 frames per window size, and you can see the style changes slightly toward the end. At the beginning, it looks like this, but by the end, the face shifts a little because the context window moves from the first 81 frames to the next chunk, and it doesn't hold the consistency super well. Another way is to load, say, a 200 frame cap setting so you can generate everything in one batch, but you'll need a lot of RAM and VRAM to support that.
Otherwise, you're stuck with 81 frames or using a loop to go through the workflow, which means reconstructing the whole sampling process each time. Now, another cool thing about using Lynx Plus with Video Vase is that you can also apply lip syncing models within the same sampling pass. So, instead of hitting two bird with one stone, you're hitting three birds with one stone with this combination. We've got face swapping using one video vase, consistent identity using links, and now we can add infinite talk for lip syncing all in one go. Here, I've added infinite talk into the sampler. So now the person isn't just making static lip movements, they're actually speaking the words from the audio reference I provided. It looks super natural. She's flicking her phone in first person view, and you can see she's actually talking on screen. To keep things organized, I've grouped all these settings into one settings group nodes. It's super simple. Just drop in your files, add your prompt, set the width and height, and load your video. Then you're ready to go. Okay? Let's say I'm going to use this image and this video as references. Same character in the image, and I'm going to swap the face and hair of this reference video character onto her. It's going to demo this little bottle, kind of like a TV commercial or video ad. I've already scripted and generated the audio. I'm going to render about 200 frames to match the audio length and set the right proportions for width and height. Before running it, I'll double check the segmentation. We need to mask the face and hair, that's it. This time, I'm using DW Pose to detect only the face, since that's all we need for the swap. Everything else stays the same. Let's see how it handles this face identity. And here it is. You can see the character swap looks super natural with smooth facial motion. Even when the bottle comes up to her nose for that smell action, the lip sync pauses, which makes total sense. If you're smelling something, you're not talking at the same time. The mouth movement feels really natural. So yeah, we've successfully done face swapping and talking lip sync in one WAN 2.1 video generation workflow. I think this could be applied across a bunch of different industries, not just for AI videos or artistic filmmaking. Think about UGC video ads, those super common ones on Facebook, Instagram, and other social media. This would work perfectly for that. Of course, it's also ideal for typical AI video use cases, like when you generate a story and your character can't just sit there silently. They need to talk with natural lip movements that match the dialogue. Face identity has improved a ton by combining WAN 2.1 vase with the Lynx video model. It's a really solid solution for character consistency and interactive motion in videos. Discover the enchanting aroma of good smell bottle. All right, that's it for this video. Have a nice day. See ya.